mapping out this first section of the Veiled Sea was coming along nicely. There were several reefs and, of course, the two sunken ships in the area. However, after meeting my new dolphin friend, he led me to a deep, mysterious pit, which they called Prehistoric Pit. Dolphin then introduced me to a very familiar face, Powderpian resident, Shark. Shark was willing to protect me on my journey, because Prehistoric Pit was right next to the Ark and chances are Thanatos would be patrolling the area. Luckily for us, Thanatos was nowhere to be seen today. Even at the edges of Prehistoric Pit, Fish. we found several species that were thought to be extinct. Orthoceros. This potentially carnivorous creature was a cephalopod in the Orthoceratidae family. It possessed a straight shell and is believed to have lived from the middle of the Ordovician period to the middle of the Silurian period. A white ammonite? Ammonoidea, white. This white-shelled version of an ammonite was quite rare. The shell itself had a partition, and the wavy patterns inside are called suture lines. These suture lines are beautiful and complex, similar to those of chrysanthemum leaves. A Kulasuchus? Kulasuchus. This freshwater amphibian, recognizable by its distinctive, spade-shaped head, lived during the Cretaceous period. It was a mass of 5 meters in length, but only around 30 centimeters tall, giving it a generally flat body. And a modern-day chambered nautilus. Chambered nautilus. This mollusk lives in fairly deep waters. This species has existed in roughly the same form for about 500 million years, so it is sometimes called a living fossil. Its outer shell looks like a parrot's beak, and it has about 90 tentacles, much more than its fellow cephalopods, the squid and octopus. Soon, Sarah detected traces of moving coral. I was thoroughly interested. I really wanted to know how coral was able to move. I kept my eyes open for any signs of that moving coral, but until then, I encountered a coelacanth. Coelacanth. A deep sea fish that looks roughly the same as it did 350 million years ago. Based on an analysis of its scales, it is believed to have a lifespan of around 100 years. A plesiosaur? Plesiosaurus. This plesiosaur lived during the early Jurassic period of the Mesozoic era. It could grow to lengths between 2 and 5 meters, and used its limbs to prey on squid and fish. A mosasaurus? Mosasaurus. This marine reptile, which lived during the late Cretaceous period in the Mesozoic era, is believed to have been the apex predator of that period. It likely preyed on large fish, turtles, ammonites, and plesiosaurs. A Leedzichthys? Leedzichthys. This species was probably the largest bony fish in history. While the fossil has only been partially excavated, it's estimated to have been 14 to 16.7 meters long, with a maximum estimated size on par with a North Pacific right whale. An ichthyosaurus? Ichthyosaurus. This species is believed to have lived between the late Triassic and the early Jurassic periods, surviving primarily on a diet of squid and other fish. At around 2 to 3 meters in length, it was smaller than other ichthyosaurs. And a Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus. This giant fish probably lived during the late Devonian period. Its jaws were strong and its bite strength may well have exceeded that of great white sharks or crocodilians. It likely moved slowly due to its heavily armored front half. Eventually, the pair of us found the source of that moving coral, only to discover that it was a giant sea turtle, with coral growing out the back of its shell. This huge creature's name was called Rosier Rose, or Rose for short. She was one of the many anomalies in the Veiled Sea, or UMLs, as my team likes to call them, unidentified massive life forms. Soon, we discovered what Rose was doing all the way down here. As it turns out, Prehistoric Pit was not only hiding many prehistoric animals that were thought to be extinct, but there was a huge temple right at the very bottom. The Temple of the Sea. Rose was clearly the guardian of this temple, and although there wasn't anything inside, 
it seemed very special to Rose. So, I let her continue to guard it and went about my business, continuing to explore the rest of Prehistoric Pit. Archelon. This reptile lived during the late Cretaceous period and was the largest turtle known, with the biggest specimens weighing up to two tons. They were not able to pull their limbs inside their shells, and those limbs were not well suited to up and down movements. I encountered a Cephalaspis. Cephalaspis. This demersal fish lived from the middle of the Silurian period to the end of the Devonian. It was jawless, with a head covered in a hard carapace, with some sort of integrated sensory organ. A this amphibian lived during the early Permian period. It possessed conical teeth, suggesting it was a carnivore. Like members of the genus Edifosaurus, it had a sail-shaped protrusion on its back. Scientists believe that this sail served to help regulate its body temperature, for example, by exposing the sail to sunlight and warming its body. And a Lyplurodon. Having surveyed enough of Prehistoric Pit, Shark escorted me to safety without Thanatos ever knowing we ever went there. With Prehistoric Pit finished, it was time to explore some more of the Veiled Sea. But that'll have to wait until next time. <laughs>